biggest challenges facing today is real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, real estate business. Today, I'm joined by Dallas agent and cool leader. Good, and we're going to give you some actionable strategies to help you stay productive during the pandemic. Keep in mind, also, these episodes are always recorded and transcribed over at theagentfactory.com. Are you ready, man? Um, definitely. All right, brother. Well, let's rock and roll. Um, I was telling you before, before I got on, that I wanted to do these episodes um, predominantly because I know that there are a lot of agents out there right now who are looking for answers. And, um, and what I wanted to do is also kind of a call to action for people um, you know, who, who come this far in, in this industry. Um, you know, they have some kind of obligation to be able to share with uh, the agent population um, how they're uh, mitigating um, through these challenging times. And so, I want to, you know, you're, you're one of the first in a, in a long line of episodes that's going to address this directly. Um, but before we do that, man, for those who don't, uh, who don't know you, why don't you have a quick buy on yourself? Absolutely. Well, I got in the business, um, un unlicensed in the business. In 2005, got my real estate license in 2006, and then officially went as that quote unquote full time 100% commission real estate uh, agent in 2007 and started started kind of failing my way forward. I, I you know, was 24 years old at the time, and uh, my, my, my broke college friends weren't buying from me, and, and uh, their, their, their parents definitely weren't going to use me because I was their their you know broke you know broke uh, broke kids friend and so i had to learn i had to quickly learn and adapt the prospecting based methods meaning going after cold uh, cold book of business um you know learn how to talk to them learn how to overcome objections learn what's motivating them and and also learn how to acquire them in the first place and so um really since 2008 2009 you know the good home team has been um, I'm, I'm, I'm in Dallas, Texas, by the way, the good home team has been a prospecting focused business, meaning we go after proactively go after colder book of business, like expired listings, uh, circle prospector, um, some for sale by owners. That's still, that's still a kryptonite of mine. Even all this time later, it's not, that's not my favorite lead source to work. Um, you know, but we are, we, we pride ourselves on, on being more of the, uh, you know, cold calling, uh, ground and pound prospecting based based real estate team. Right. And you and I have done a show uh, before and um, you kind of really hit on some of the high points of, uh, of your specific journey. Our businesses were built um, very much the same way. And, uh, and so obviously, you know, you're, I, I believe you know, a lot of people that I wanted to share, a lot of people specifically like you um, because you you take a very actionable approach to your business. In, in other words, your business is not passive. I mean, you guys are you guys are built on the foundation of, of making phone calls and making contact. And I think, um, given the current circumstances, that um, right now for really your time um, for you to hone those types of skills, because in many ways, you know, you may not be going in as many shows as you used to, or as many listening appointments. To. Um, but that being said, give us the current climate in Dallas. What's your market like right now? And then tell me some of the guidelines that you all are trying to work through uh, with regard to your government and stuff down and so forth. Yeah. So, so, you know, with what's going on in regards to everything, I mean, our. You know, personally, I'm a, I'm a little displeased with the the lack of or, or the inconsistent messages that are that the community government, the city government, and the state government are getting out. Right. So, um, Dallas County. I'm in Collin County, which is which is right next to Dallas County um, mm -hmm. in in the Dallas Fort Worth metroplex. Dallas County issued issued a shelter in place right off the bat, and um, and they were. Um, what I've heard some people use it as more draconian style shelter in place, meaning uh, very few businesses were essential other than like grocery stores and the essential items. So real estate agents were not considered essential. So um, Dallas County completely started shutting down everything uh, very quickly. 
and and Collin County, Collin County, and some of the other uh, counties around. Um, a couple of weeks later, did a shelter in place, but deemed all businesses were essential. And so I was like, okay, you know, that doesn't really that doesn't really mean much. Okay, we're essential, so we can we can operate in Collin County. It's business for the most part as usual. Just make sure we're doing it with precaution. Um, you know, doing the social distancing, et cetera. But then the cities started, you know, the, the mayor started hearing some backlash about that every business being essential and they started imposing their own guidelines. Um, so as real estate agents, we were, we were left kind of holding the bag wondering, well, are we essential, not essential? Are we allowed to work, not allowed to work? Mm -hmm. And so what, what I noticed happening is that, that and, and I'm hearing this across the country um, as, as I'm talking and networking with agents is that a lot of these a lot of these agents kind of just went into a, a paralysis mode almost I, I've been calling a vacationing mode of not doing anything yeah. right they're not even reaching out to their their database um, you know more you know I see more posts coming from a lot of real estate agents asking um, uh, what what shows should I be binge watching right now on Netflix and <laughs> and and my opinion look that's great you know there, there's I think there's some time to catch up on some of that and enjoy family um, there is a silver lining in all this, but the way I look at it and the way I've been teaching, you know, you know, my team members at the good home team is what's, what's the one or two skills that we can be focusing right now to skill up on. Um, because, you know, in, in March alone, we took 21 listings. Wow. Over half of those signed seller listing agreements came when the government's, you know, the, the county city and then state government started uh, uh, issuing the shelter in place. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that that hard work right right there is because our agents are still out there making phone calls. We have leads. We've got people. We actually have more leads getting inquired right now because we run a lot of Facebook advertising. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot more people that have the free time on their hand. Consumers do. So what are they doing? They're seeing our ads come out. And, and, you know, most of them are inquiring about, you know, foreclosed properties because they think it's an immediate, we'll see an immediate foreclosure hit, which we, we aren't, at least not, not, you know, right away. And so, you know, we, we have, we've got a ton, a ton more leads coming in. The benefit to us as a company is that with more leads coming in, they're at a cheaper cost. So, so we're still focusing our efforts on reaching out to these, to these agents or, or to these, to these leads. And making sure that we're calling them, texting them, emailing them, getting in front of them, and then just having a natural flowing conversation, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the number one thing that we're hearing right now is, is you know, from a seller or buyer perspective, they don't want to do anything because they, they want to get past, you know, COVID, the, the, the virus and get on the other side of it to see where it goes. Right. Great. So we just... We just acknowledge that. We understand we're dealing with that. Everyone as, as a human being is dealing with that. So we just acknowledge that. And then we go into their, you know, if, if you know, once we're past it or if they were, if, if there was an opportunity right now to find something that makes sense, what would that be? Hypothetically, if you were to buy a house right now, what, what you know, what area of town would you want to be in? What would that house look like? What price range would it be? In? What do you do for a living? Right? Because I'm talking to more and more people right now that they're actually making more money than they ever have been since the virus took into place. I'm talking about catering companies, some, some restaurant, some small, some small mom and pop shops, restaurant owners are now making more money than ever. Right. So, yeah. you know, there's people in the, the mortgage and the title business making a lot of money right now. And so there, there are, there are plenty of opportunities to go around, go around, we just have to do a better job of uncovering those st you know, those stones to find those motivated sellers and buyers and sure. then come from contribution, especially on the seller side of showing of, of solving their problems and getting creative with with. Yes, showings are down. Right. If you're in Dallas, especially in DFW, if you're in Dallas County, we're, we're not seeing a ton of showings in place unless you're a vacant mm -hmm. listing. But we're getting, you know. You know what I will give credit to most real estate agents is we are getting we do we do a darn good job of getting creative with trying to find solutions to whatever the marketplace is throwing. So we have yeah. gotten creative with the virtual tours, 
um, you know, FaceTime and everything else. So I, I will give agents a lot of credit for that and, 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 and being problem solvers, but we need to do a better job of solving the client's problems, not just the marketing side, but, but not come off as commission hungry. Let's figure out, you know, let's, let's figure out how to, to truly solve, you know, whatever, whatever the client's going through problem at that time. Yeah. I love it, man. And, you know, when I think about somebody like you, you've got, you've got two different hats that you're wearing, right? So you, you wear the hat of the real estate agent, but you also wear the hat of the team leader. And so if we're speaking specifically towards wearing your team leader hat, what is your message right now to your agents? What is the, are people still coming into the office? How are you running meetings? What does that dynamic look like? So for the most part, our office is, our office space is still open as long as you you know if you're sick you definitely are not you're not coming in right and right. and very few of our agents and 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 even staff are coming in we we do have a few coming you know that that do come in and take advantage of the office um, you know and the ones that are coming in guess what it's a lot more quiet less less distractions going on so you sure. can you can stay focused a lot easier but we've started we've we've now implemented uh, you know just like everyone else Zoom meetings um, and and you know, it's, it's a lot of our conversations during the zoom meeting times is I built my book of business and I built the, this, this company during the recession. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the conversations are going back to that mindset of, of, you know, like today we're recording this on Monday, uh, April 6th and you know, our meeting, our, our Monday meeting that we had this morning was, you know, a lot of our agents, all of our agents have been in the business less than five years. Mm -hmm. They've only experienced the good times. So they've only experienced when they have us when they when they've had a seller hire them. They've only experienced you know showings happening or getting offers fairly quickly, yeah. and they and they're not liking the answers that when that we're advising to homeowners that this right now is a time of patience, right? We've got more eyeballs at home, and so it, it's it's leading by example and leading by by what's happened in the past of saying this is how we built this company during a recession. This is what we said and this is what we did. And this is the proof and the results that we got from it. Mm -hmm. Now, now we're going to echo somewhat of a similar statement without just, you know, sounding the alarm bells that a recession is coming because, you know, there, there darn well could be possibly be a recession or what could happen just like China starting to see is in, in South Korea where, where, you know, life is starting to get back to normal is they saw pent up demand happening. And now all of a sudden, you know, these, these, with that demand, there's, there's the real estate economy is booming in, in China. It's, it's three times busier than it was before. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to go based on that assumption right now that there will be pent up demand until, until otherwise noted. And, yeah. and it's keeping our agents focused on that and making sure that they're giving the best advice um, and direction and guidance to our clients and potential clients as possible. Yeah, that's a great point. And what that makes me think about is, um, is essentially what you're coaching your agents to do is hold up a really nice pipeline right now, right? In 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 the hopes that when this is all over, that they're going to be as busy as they ever were, perhaps even busier because of that up demand. Correct. Absolutely. So what and, and the and what we've been we've been keeping the eye on the prize of saying, look, if if, you know, if we do go into a recession, what I am teaching you today and training you on, it's even harder training, which we've you know, I've been calling I've been calling a recession for the last year and a half. Right. I feel like the weatherman. You know, it's like oh, it's every six months. I'm like, I, I feel it's coming. Like we feel a dip off. We uh, dip off in the and the local economy. I'm like, all right, here it comes. And, and, you know, but what I, what I've been telling our agents and especially the new ones, I said, look, if, if I'm right, what I'm doing is I'm helping you have sustainability power in this industry. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If I'm wrong, which I hope that I am wrong. I hope, I hope I'm wrong. Just like I tell a seller, hope I'm wrong on pricing. If, if you think it's worth more and we test out your pricing, I hope I'm wrong. Cause that means that we're putting more money in your pocket. If, if, if I am wrong right now on this, then that's even better because what what I'm teaching you and you're deploying and, and implementing today, you're now going to come out the other side with more money than you've ever you ever would have had been if this would have never happened. This right. this is this is that blessing in disguise, right? And yeah. and it's keeping their eye on this of two things: 
you know, sustainability in the business, because I asked them, I said, who, who wants to get out of this business, raise their hand and, and be in a different industry. And no one raises their hand on it. Right. Yeah. Um, they, they all, they all want to stay. Well, you're going to have to do tough things at this time in order to stay in this business. Yeah. Right. We had an, you know, we were blessed. We had an amazing March. We, we, you know, we've got, we still have checks sitting on our desk ready to be cashed, you know, from March. Um, our April still looking very strong. May is going to be an, an, another story. And so, you know, what, what we're doing is in saying, instead, of, instead of looking 90 days out like we would normally do, yeah. let's look in 30, 30 day e increments and determine what is your staying power? How many nurtures are you putting in place? And then out of your nurtures, what is the, what are your immediate actionable results? Because I have, I've, and, and I lead by example, I did, I did lead gen this weekend and I'm talking to consumers that are complaining and I can show text messages and, 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 and emails from, from consumers that are saying agents are not responding They're That's even worse right now. They're not responding. So it, it's like, are they on vacation? Are they at a business? What's going on? There are people wanting to buy and sell houses right now. It is your job as, as an agent, if you're not on a team, or if your team leader is disappearing right now and, and not coming out and leading, you know, the, the charge, it's your job as, as an individual to hold yourself accountable, to go out and find those motivated buyers and sellers right now. Would you venture to say that it might be easier to take market share right now because of the amount of agents who are just not working? I, that's how I look at it. That's absolutely. That's how I, that's, that's how I look. I've always looked at it from that, right? Yeah. This, this is the time to get your, at a, at a cheaper acquisition cost. If we look at it from, from, you know, you know, cost, you know, cost to acquire a client, this is your time to build up that brand recognition. And, 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 you know, again, most of us did not, you know, a lot of us in this business did not go through the, the, the 2008 recession. So you haven't, you haven't, you, you didn't build up that type of callous and endurance. But what I will say is, is, you know, if you, you know, it's getting used to taking a listing or taking a buyer right now who may, who may not, you may not feel that paycheck for 90 to 180 days, right? It's, it's having, it's, it's getting yeah. used to that marathon rather than letting yourself get down, um, you know, and, and look at it, you know, cause you're not getting paid. You're not earning that commission check as, as quickly as you're used to, but look at it from, from that opportunity to build your, your brand, your, your name and brand recognition in the community and then give back. I mean, we created a, a Facebook group called DFW cares and that group talks nothing about real estate, but it's, it's designed the, the sole focus is designed to, to connect people that have the resources, that have the connections with people that are in need during this time, because there's a lot of them. There's, you know, you know, fortunately enough, Dallas, Dallas is kind of in that middle mix with, with, you know, how many cases there are and, and, and people passing away from it versus like, you know, if we were in New York, we'd be screwed right now. Right. Yeah. So, so there are, there's, you know, we're, we're blessed to, to be in a, um, you know, in, in, in more of a, you know, not as, not as bad of a, of a outbreak as some of the others, but there's still a lot of people in, in every city and County that, that needs help. And it's our job as community leaders in this industry to, to help connect those, those that need to those that have the, the resources and connections. Yeah, that's a great point, man. So what do you think in, given the current circumstances, what should an agent's day look like? like it like it should every day regardless of what this this virus or if this was even an, an issue or not it's it's yeah. staying consistent with your schedule and and or or making your schedule and staying consistent with it meaning getting up showering you know showering and actually putting on you know your your work clothes or at least the top half if i stand it up i i have workout shorts on with this polo but uh, um, you know, business on top, you know, party to work out on the bottom, but, uh, um, but it's, and then getting into your office or your space that you're going to stay, that's your work area. So if, when you're at home, I, I have a true dedicated office space, but if, if I didn't have that office space, I would make a, a corner that, that I would go to and say, this is, this is when I'm in this corner, this is where I'm going to work. 
right? Yeah. Don't bother me. This is the time I need to make my calls. I need to reach out to, to, you know, my sphere. I need to be making content, et cetera. So it's for us, it's eight to 12 is our legion time, you know, um, and, and from on Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m., eight to eight to nine or eight to eight 30, we're trying to shorten our meetings. That's when we're doing our team meetings and a little bit of some scripting and objection handling what we're facing, you know, with, with, with current objections. And then it's on the phones. We're calling, you know, for sale by owners, expired listings. Um, you know, we've got a, we've got a large database. And so um, this is the time to reach out to your database and ask how people are doing. If right. they, if they've lost their job, um, try to get them connected to, a, to an employment center. There's, there's, there's plenty of places that are hiring right now. Uh, you know, Walmart, Amazon, et cetera, that's, you know, may not be ideal, but it's a place to go make some, some, you know, some cash and, and, and be able to survive through this until we get back on the other side of this. Um, and then what, when you're reaching out to your, to your sphere and community, um, it's, it's finding out, you know, how their job's doing. Are, are they doing okay? Uh, do they know anybody else that, that needs any help? And then, you know, what we've been talking to when it comes to people looking at loan forbearances is making sure that they understand that the forbearance may not be as good as it, as it sounds. Yeah. Being an educator in the, in the uh, you know, in your, your local community there about this may be too good or this may not, this may be uh, an enemy in disguise, disguised yeah. as a friend, right? Um, to where you miss, you know, they, they, the loan providers or services allows you forbearance for three or four or five months. And then when those three to four to five months are up, they're asking you to pay the entire amount up front. Wow. Okay. Right. So it's not as good as it sounds, right? It's do your homework and do your research and then help people get connected with SBA loans. I'm a believer in, in you know, in, in, in the more you connect, the more you can help people, the more it's going to come back to you. Yeah. Yeah. The longer the Absolutely. Yep. So it sounds like you guys are going to double down on the foundation principle right now. I mean, your day might be the same. Uh, you talked about, um, you know, some of these, you guys are doing it. You know, everyone understands. People are going to be. Um, some people will, will be. I mean, they'll, they'll still look at home. Right? We know the people are looking, but there'll be other people where they say, you know, like, we're going to wait until after this is over. What kind of conversation um, are you having with your agents? Are you going to be in some of these objections? So, so you, you cut out a little bit. How are we handling some of these objections? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the obvious objections are, right? I don't know what the obvious of those. So what we're telling, what, what I've been, I've been advocating and, and, you know, to my entire team is like, look, we're, you're not going to objection handle this. You just can't. Right. Right. This is not, you know, this is not a distrust in agents or dislike of agents or being skeptical. This is real world shit going on. Yeah. And so you can't objection handle it. What we do is we acknowledge it. Absolutely. You know, you know, you know, and, and talk about even what we may be going through. But then I go into the hypotheticals of, uh, you know, Mike, if, if you were to buy a house right now, where would that be? You know, are you a first time home buyer? Um, have you owned a home before? Do you have a home now? I'm going to get into back to the basics with with typical scripting, you know, the the you know, family occupation, recreation, dreams, motivation or LP mama, tile, you know, LP mama, you know, scripts, you know, location, price, uh, agents, motivation and appointment or mortgage or whatever it is. Right. So um, I'm going to get in more into that. I'm going to acknowledge that. Look, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to set it to the side. I'm going to get to the nitty gritty of, of you know, if you were to sell right now, where, 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 where do you want to go? Right. Yeah. Um, if, if you're just trying to test the market, we're not going to take you on as a client. Right. We're, sure. we're right now we're setting aside those, those kind of tire kicker sellers and tire kicker buyers. Like if you could find me something that fits in this small bucket, um, we're going to set those aside. We're going to create those as longer term nurtures um, and, and only focus on finding the motivated sellers and buyers. Um, and, and there's still a lot of them. I mean, we still have a good amount that's even reaching out to us right now. Um, I have, I can, I could send an email to you from several, several clients or potential clients to reach out over the weekend and saying, I, you know, I want to buy a home is now a good time to buy. 
Yeah. Uh, the one thing I see that seems to be consistent amongst all successful agents is that it's still business as usual. You know what I mean? It's like you you understand um, that you know we're in the midst of a pandemic, but there's also some level of excitement, right? That it is what it is, and that you got to persist. Well, and, and and look, in the beginning, we didn't want to we didn't want to say, "Hey, it's business as usual," because we didn't want to create we didn't want to come off as insensitive. But the longer that we go through this, the more the new normal comes out on it, right? So. So it's, you know, it's more acceptable. We're, we're still practicing social distancing, but absolutely. And, and behind the scenes, it is still business as usual. Um, what it is doing, it, it is, you know, and, and, and I was talking to several other agents about this is, is it's making us skill back up, right? You know, on the ride up, everything was working. Like you could have the crappiest looking photos. You could have the crappiest walkthrough tours or videos and, and, you know, there was the, there was still nine times out of 10, it was going to sell. And now what it's going to do is it's going to expose the, the items that are not working that you thought were. And, and now it's time for us to get more creative, becoming more efficient with our processes. Again, going back and making sure that we're not overpaying for everything. Right. And, and being, being, you know, you know, a lot of times during the, the, the run up in, in a, in a market, you get bloated. And, and now's the time to, to let go of some of that bloats. Now's the time to, to, you know, hone in on, on and perfect your skills a little bit more, especially yeah. and when, when I, and what I mean by that, especially if you are a sphere referral based agent, because if we do go into a recession yeah, or if this lasts longer than, than what everyone thinks it does or, or is going to, then, then the sphere-based agents are typically the ones that struggle the most during the pullback, right? Because your referral sources are drying up. We're not used to going out there and, and being persistent and asking strangers for business. And so, so that's where, where a lot of people need to scale up and get comfortable or find solutions to attract cold or stranger business in and then make it a warm audience, right? Cold audience into warm audience and then and then get them to to, you know, inquire or ask to hire you or about your services. Yeah, that's a great man. Um so for you guys when you when you guys on Monday, what kind of I mean, obviously you're working with a lot of people and everyone's concerned different related to um, you know their situation. Um, what, what are you noticing right now that you talk to your agents either in the group or individually that, um, that, that they're really concerned about? So you concerned from just their personal concerns? Yeah. Um, I, you know, a lot of them are, are definitely concerned with with and and a lot of it's still normal concerns of just not finding in their mind enough you know they're still frustrated on on you know work you know talking to buyers that have low credit scores and and the credit and now the credit scores are starting to tighten up on the lender side even more um so so the concerns are, are deep down i know what they are is is do they have the staying power in this yeah right and and you know do they do they have what it takes to to be able to continue taking more and more rejection on or disappointment, not even rejection right now. It's more, you know, you could have, you could have 10 people raise their hand, but if they've got a 600 credit score right now, you know, it's, it's hard to get them approved at the moment. Right. And, and because the lenders are starting to, to, to tighten up and, and overcorrect that just temporarily. And so, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the agents do not like, can't handle the disappointment on top right. of the rejection. So it's just again, it's keeping their their eye on why they got in the business. Um, um, what could they do to stay to stay in in their most efficient zone, which is you know during the lead lead generation. Yeah. And and what what a good mentor of mine and a good buddy of mine, uh, he's a real estate coach, Wayne Salomon's talked about, is he's like we need to not pick up other people's backpacks. 
And, and what he means by that is, is Mike, I don't like, if you were to call me like, man, I, I got this problem and I, I, I'm real tight on money and yeah. I don't know what to do. And, 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 and now you're putting your problems onto maybe the problems that I have and me being a fixer. I'm like, yeah, come over here, Mike, I'll help you. Like, let me, let me give you some of my leads. And, and he's like, you, you've got to be careful on the backpacks that you're going to pick up. And most likely, you know, especially with clients, you're going to work with a lot of sellers right now who are losing their jobs and they're going to take out their frustration and vent on you, you know, and, and, and a lot of times it's not nice. They're, they're rude. They're mean. And, and what we, what we going back to eight, nine, 10, 11, when we worked with a lot of people in financial distress and short sales, it, when they were, when they were yelling at us, you know, calling us names, we had to take a step backwards and, and say, all right, is this something, are they taking, are they just projecting and venting on us? Or is this something that we're doing poorly? And, yeah. and for the agent side, it's the same thing. It's like, look, if I do what I'm supposed to do, I need to believe in my leadership. I need to believe that Nick and what the team is, is preaching is leading me down a path that will, that if I truly am going to do it, it's going to lead to success. And if, and if I'm not having success, can we truly analyze where where the the kink is in the system? What is clog, what is clogging up that drain right now that's preventing me from getting to to success? Yep. Right. That's a great point. And, and so, in Nick Good's opinion, how does this all shake out at the end, brother? Oh man, I've got I've got two paths that I think shakes out. Let's hear them both. the 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 first path is is what I personally believe will happen. The second path is what I'm preparing for. So the first path is um, over the next the next two months. You know, we're already starting to see in New York there's the, the the there's a decline in deaths, right? So that's a good thing. We're starting, you know, New York starting hopefully getting over that peak. Only you know the rest of this week will will project that, and, and time will tell on that part for this week. But um, as we as we get back into the, the decrease in, in the number of new cases and deaths, they start releasing and letting us go back to work, releasing shelter in place, but still practicing social distancing. Yeah. And so we see our businesses pick back up, right? Because jobs are, you know, people that were furloughed, they're rehiring, people are putting their, their, uh, their plans that were on hold back in action. And Q3 and Q4 will be busier than what it normally is if, if we're doing our jobs that we're supposed to today. Yeah, that's that's where I personally believe will happen. What I'm yeah. preparing for is that we go into a, a recession that could be just as bad or worse than 2008. Yeah. Right. And and what that would mean is, is I personally haven't cut expenses yet, but that would look at, you know, you know, then starting to cut expenses, um, getting even leaner, um, looking at and, and looking at more distressed lead sources. You know, again, you know, buying the the pre foreclosure data and starting to call on pre foreclosures and starting to work the short sell market yeah. and then build up a a stronger, more aggressive investor hit list that is that is looking for buy and hold opportunities. That's that's what we are preparing for. That's what we've we did in the then the first the first recession that, that we went through in 08. Um, and so it's that one's definitely a tougher market. Right, I th yeah. you were you were in that recession, weren't you? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. yeah buddy. So so it's it's from from that standpoint what we're prepared for, and then where I personally think it's going is is you know Q three and Q four will be busier than than it would be normally, and yeah. and we need to take advantage of that to rebuild any depleted cash. Yep, I tend to agree with uh, option A. I think that what you're probably going to see is um, you're going to see a lot of attrition and a lot of natural attrition over the next couple of months. In other words, agents who are in the business that shouldn't be, I think will naturally fall out, which could be a good thing. Um, and then what you're going to see is the folks that ride this out, um, the folks that make it through the next 60 days um, or 90 days perhaps, are, are going to see a huge hit. Um, during the, like you said, during the second or during the third, or third and fourth quarter, and you should be able, I think you'll do enough business to make up this entire second quarter during the third and fourth. 
absolutely totally agree with you so so you know that's what we're prepared for and and you know and and i think that's what everyone should be preparing for yep brother i always have a great time talking with you man um, i appreciate you you're always so willing to jump on and share and add value and certainly i appreciate that uh, do me a big favor if you are someone that might enjoy the podcast please share it with them if you like the podcast please go to wherever you listen to the podcast and subscribe uh, nick thank you so much man i i, I, uh, I always enjoy our talks and uh i i wish you guys the best for all this likewise brother i'll I look forward to the next one likewise We'll see you, bud.